I'm just a little nervous about the public hearing. I know several people that want to speak and my plan is to call just to let everyone know that I will call on them to speak rather than opening the floor. And I was thinking, you know, I would just call on the people I know that want that are supposed to be on there first. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see you. Okay. I didn't join with the video. Since I it'll just give me one thing to remember to undo. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. I don't know if I can you talk to you. Okay. Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, just because you have to go through the computer system in order for me to. Yeah, wait to get my results back. Oh, really? Hang on. I'm, on, I'm setting up the Planning Commission thing. <laughs> I'm going to be on TV. I'm good. You're good? Okay, good. John's COVID negative. So. Look at you. Have you grown another foot since I've seen you? You look like it. That's right, bro. I'll turn it on just so it's not weird since it's only the two of us. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? All right. I thought I turned my video on. Did you mute, turn my video off? I don't think so. I, I, um, I'm working on the going to Facebook right now. Okay. All right. Sorry. Let's see, but I don't want to do it all the way or it will be live right now. <laughs> okay. You can bring up the preview. I figured out that that makes it go a little faster if you get, get that going. Maggie, would you run out and grab my stuff? Oh, me? that's what it's doing right now. You're right. I'm still in John, the planning commission's back on live stream because he was trying to talk to me at the door. <laughs> it's a the video is lagging on my end. Um, when I get off of this Facebook post, maybe will it go back to normal, I hope? Uh, mine looks good from this side of you, so. Hmm. All right. Am I supposed to be talking? Oh, hello? Oh, no, I, I just missed a phone call. She will live in the center Thank you. Good one. Maggie asked if she could go with you. I've already got a resident in the waiting room. Okay. <laughs> I'll disappear. 
But at least that means that she joined. She knew, figured out how to join. Got a little fly in here. Nobody else has jumped in. No, just one. I haven't let her in from the waiting room yet. I thought it was like 4.15 when I first contacted you. I just realized it's like 4.07 now. So mm -hmm. That's why I was frantic to start with. Hi, Angela.
Hi, Joy. Do you want to unmute yourself so we can just make sure we can hear you? Hey, Joy, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, we lost her. So I wonder if her internet dropped her. Could be. You're, you're coming through loud and clear on, on my side. OK. Well, that's why I was trying to test that. It looks like she's trying to get back on. So here's Paul. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Paul. You're our first planning commission member, so <laughs> I'm glad to see you. We have. Um, uh, a few people waiting that want to speak during the public hearing. Okay. Um, I, um, I've been meaning to call you back about that thing about uh, meadow, Emerald Meadows or whatever. Sorry to get you too involved in that. Um, a coworker was asking me some questions and I was thought I could get him some documentation and stuff like that. But um, it looks like maybe things are heading the right direction with that. I'm not sure. Uh, I think you have a meeting. Is your coworker John Paris? No, Garrett oh. Munn is the one that I'm that I'm talking to. But there's like I have like I know like three people that work out there that live in that subdivision, maybe four. <laughs> but uh, anyway, they're kind of I, I don't know who that John guy was. That was who I was actually going to call you about to figure out who he was. I thought he might have been with the city. But um, anyway. <laughs> He lives right on, he lives in Emerald Meadows. He's just a good researcher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to get logged on here earlier because I'm using a different device um, to make sure everything was okay. I'm actually on my wife's profile because I couldn't figure out how to log out. Okay, and I can change your, no, you updated your name. I, I changed the name, but it's, it's the, the email address is wrong. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to send Steve Worsham the information right now. He didn't have it, he said. And I was kind of trying to look at your email you just sent out. And I'll and I may bring that up in the public hearing just to share with you what I learned today. Okay. All right. I'm gonna let this iPad person in because I'm it may be a commissioner. Sometimes Ray doesn't change his name. All right. I'm going to go on mute and uh, probably turn my video off for a minute. And then okay. uh, I'll come back. I'll come back in, uh, in, you know, closer to time. Okay. All right. Thank you. The uh, iPad user, would you give me your name before we get started? Oh, yeah, you you're on mute. So, let's see. Now, how's that? Can you hear me now? Hi, Ralph. Yes, I can. Yeah. Are you wanting to speak at our uh, public hearing? I'm joining it at, at the request of the architect for Big Locks. He said, oh, I, okay. I did the landscape design, so I'll just be standing by if you need to talk with me. Oh, well, thank you very much for doing that. All right. My pleasure. Okay.
Okay, we're still a little bef about 10 minutes before the meeting. So I see we have several guests that are waiting, I think for the public hearing. And I see one guest that says iPad. Uh, will you tell me your name? William, did you hear me? Uh, it lagged a little bit, so I heard William. Got a lag issue. Yes. Okay. Hey, Ron, this is Jennifer. Hello, hello. Okay, I think I'm there. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> Hi, Larry. We're waiting on a couple of other planning commission members. 
to join. And then uh, we have several people with us that will want to speak during the public hearing. Okay. Am I the, can I ask you, did the Boza thing come about because this was going to go outside of the lines of what the planning commission would approve or the planning department would approve on their own? Which item are you asking me about, about the rezoning? On the Boza, where there, where uh, Big Lots wants to put the the ramp on the back of the building. Yes. Um, that was because it would be building in the setback. Okay, and so and and the uh, and the department can't approve that on their own. That has to go through the Boza. Correct. So you're going to say we don't recommend approval and then if we have to, we can override that. Does that sound right? Um, cause you, cause as a planning department, you can't approve something going outside the zoning regulation. I have it on the board of zoning appeals. And then I thought that what I thought the variance would come first from the Board of Zoning Appeals. And depending on whether or not the variance is granted, when we'll look at their site plan and approve it based upon either yes, they can build it there, or they'll have to come up with a different design and submit it without the variance. Mm. Mm. So okay. I don't have anything in front of the planning commission tonight. We're just looking the we're just looking at the variance as a okay, and, and and it can work that way too. I was just trying okay. to figure out: are we um, the variance is coming, or or the variance is going before the board of zoning and uh, the Boza because the actual planning department can't approve that variance. It has, it'll have to be the BOZA that approves the variance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I was clear on that because I was trying to figure out why didn't they, if they presented something to the department, the department's gonna to have to say, no, we can't recommend that because that doesn't fit the zoning requirements. And then they can appeal it to the Board of Zoning and Appeals. Yes. I got a call. Yeah, we have a planning commission. Ms. Matt, and she uh, is trying to join by Zoom, so she's not there. Okay. Uh, I just sent her the uh, link. And oh, you did? She, she's trying to join now. Do you have a... a Waiting room set up. I do. Okay, so she should be in the waiting room. I'll go check on that. Okay, do you that. want this too? I was going to give it to you in case anybody else. Okay, she's in the conference room. You got a phone number? Yeah. So she can call the number. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. She's out in the conference room, so she'll try to call me. Okay. Do you one of these numbers? She has, if she's going to join by phone, if the link doesn't work, then she can call that phone number and put that in and do a conference call. Gotcha. Okay, we have several people in the waiting room, so let me get them in here. All right. Admit, admit. I'm going to mute. Okay. All right, and if anyone that's just waiting to speak, if you'll just mute yourself, that will help us keep out the background noise.
Jennifer, give me a couple of seconds warning when you want to go live, okay? Okay, I will. Let's see. Jennifer? Yes. This is Selena Trussell, and I'm with my husband. We're logged in under his name, William Trussell, or Bill Thank Trussell. You. So we're on it together. All right, I think as is Shelly. Oh, wait, I have two more in the waiting room. I'm going to text Shelly Smith. And hit your start video if you want to, want to see it. Not necessarily, but I guess. Is that polite? Let me ask you guys. Okay. All right. Here's Shelly coming in now. And everyone, we're just about to start the Planning Commission meeting. Uh, Philip, I'm going to go ahead and try to push this to Facebook. Okay, y'all are on television. Well, let me see. Me just a minute, it's making me start all over on my Facebook. Okay, I do have one correction to the agenda, Chad, um, our chairman here. Yes, ma'am. On item 6A, the first item there, it's just a, a typo. I had entered that the request was for low density residential to high density residential, and it's actually medium density residential R2 requested to rezone to high density R3. And the information is correct in the staff report. I just have it incorrect on this caption. Okay. Okay. All right. Are we all here? We are, we are all here. Oh, okay, sorry. Well, then I will start. Um, We'll read this and we'll do a call of the order and determine our quorum. So due to the COVID-19 emergency, the Planning Commission will conduct its essential business by electronic means rather than being required to gather a quorum of its members physically present in the same location because it is necessary to protect the health, safety, and the welfare of Tennesseans. This meeting is in compliance with the governor's 
Executive Order 51, which remains in effect until 11.59 p.m. on August 29, 2020. So I want to call to order. I want to say, you know, it has been determined that we meet electronically is necessary to protect the public health and safety and welfare in light of the coronavirus. A recording of this meeting will be made available to the public online. So I'm going to call roll in essence <laughs> to determine a quorum. Um, Ray Nois? Here. William Comer? Here. Paul Schwer? Here. Rupa Blackwell? Here. Shelly Smith? Here. Okay. It looks like we are all here. I determine we have a quorum. Um, if everyone please stand. Um, Alderman Nois, would you mind doing the pledge, starting us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you everybody. Um, with that, we will get going. Um, you have a copy of the minutes from our last meeting on June 15th, if the everybody would look over those and see if I will entertain a motion once everybody feels comfortable. Move to approve. Second. All right. I have a uh, approval from um, Mr. Nois and a second from Mrs. Blackwell. So all those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. It's going to have to be a voice vote. We got to do a voice, voice vote because of this. So I'll ask you, um, Mr. Nois. Aye. Mr. Comer. Aye. Mr. Schwer. Aye. Ms. Smith. Aye. Miss Blackwell. Aye. And I am as I as well. So Larry Crabtree votes oh, well, aye. Larry Crab, I'm <laughs> sorry, Larry, you are not up on my screen, so I did not see you there. And Larry is here. I apologize. I only have six people at the top. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that, Larry. <laughs> no problem. All right. And we do have a quorum. Mr. Crabtree is here. We're all in. We are all here. I apologize. All right. Um, do we have any reports from any officer staff at this time? No report. No report. All right. Then we will move to the next order of business. It is old business. It is a zoning amendment. This will be a public hearing. Uh, the public hearing, um, if you choose to talk, I don't know exactly how we're going to do this, Jennifer. I don't know if you have a plan on that, but they have two minutes. Please state your name and your address. And um, whoever is keeping the time, who is keeping that time, Jennifer? Angela is on this call and is gonna keep the time for us. Okay, so when you hear, when Angela says time, I mean, your time is up, you also can um, have somebody, you use your time for somebody else to continue to speak. But you just need to state your name and, and address and let them know that you're yielding your time to someone else. Um, this is my first time really doing one of these like this. So Jennifer, do you need something? Uh, I just wanted to share with you, I do have a game plan. Several people have talked to me in advance of this meeting and I know are wanting to speak. So what I would suggest is I'm gonna go through the list of names that I know are would like to speak and, um, and then we'll open the floor for anyone else that may be on the call that I'm not aware of. And it uh, looks like we have two more people in the waiting room. So let me admit them. Jennifer, Jennifer, one of them is me. It's I have the, I'm open on my PC as well as my iPad. Oh, okay, perfect. And then the other looked like it was uh, Ron Wheeler. So we'll just let him know we're just opening the public hearing on the rezoning request. And uh, I'm gonna invite Angela Morales with our planning and code staff. She received a comment uh, over the phone today and she's gonna re report that to us. 
Yes, so this comment comes from Mr. Freddie Whaley of 815 East Lincoln Street. And his question was, um, what has changed over the last 40 years that would make it okay for this property to be rezoned now? And he states he has concerns with flooding and runoff, school overcrowding, and says the city already has enough public housing. And that's the end of his comment. Okay, and I do think that uh, I should advise everyone, um, the original application was made by a developer who was seeking to purchase the property. And at this time, that request he withdrew his request, but the owners picked it up. And so the rezoning request is being made by the owners of the property. And the there is no longer a development plan uh, associated with the request. Are the, are the owners of the property on the call with us? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Shepherds. Yes. Hi. Would you like to share with us um, anything for the public hearing? Sure, sure. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I would uh, just make a few comments uh, to um, to the city uh, planning commission and to the property owners uh, that are around that property. <clears throat> uh, we we certainly can understand the concern that the property owners of east of the property that built in the flood zone A. Uh, and their concerns. Uh, but to city planners, I think, and engineers, I wouldn't think would approve a plan that could create an issue for them. If I lived there, I would, I'd have, I would have the same concern. They already, you know, those folks that live in that floodplain already have a problem there. And so we certainly wouldn't want to make it any worse than what it is. But I would, I would say that at the end of the day, uh, that would be, uh, uh, that would be, uh, when the properties developed, I think that the city planners and engineers would have a big say so in what, how the, how the, if there's any runoff, how that'd be handled. Second of all, the, you know, the property currently is under a green belt provision and it's, it's generating about $1,100 a year in property taxes. And, and if you take that revenue, um, you know, and, and put it into an R2 or, or an R3, uh, you know, that could potentially generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenues for the city of Tullahoma, property tax, sales tax, uh, the utility tax, and so forth. So, and second of all, I think if you took the current R2 zoning uh, and placed up to, I mean, the way I looked at it was, we got about 20 acres of, of, of the 28 that are buildable. If you took, if you placed 30 to 40 homes under the R2 uh, uh, zoning, and all those rooftops, streets, sidewalks, you'd be surprised how much water runoff would be compared to the multi-units multi under one roof plus parking. So, and then the city wouldn't have any street costs if they, if they did a, a, a multi-unit that the, 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 the property owners would maintain that. And most of all, this property is just in, in you know, very poor conditions. It's an eyesore. If I was living in neighbor, my neighborhood, I would certainly like to see something done with it. Uh, that property's been in the family for over two hundred over two hundred years with the with the Reagan family, Jenny, Jenny Reagan Davis, Milt Davis, T B and Bailey Reagan. That's uh so we we'd like for some I know that uh, the heirs would like to see something nice happen with that property. That's okay. all I have. Thank you. I'm speaking right. for the for the family. Okay, is that um Ms. Shepherd, is there anything you'd like to add? You have two minutes as well. He's far more finesse than I am, so that's the reason I asked for him to be my spokesman. But thank you very much. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, with that, we appreciate y'all's input and in letting us know. Miss Moody, do we have um, our next in line? We do. Um, we have one comment that came in by email today from Tammy Luna. She's at 2003 East Lincoln and 301 Stewart Street. And she said, Dear Planning Commission, I'm writing in regards to the parcel of land on East Lincoln Street. I'm adamantly against rezoning this property for several reasons. First, the southeastern quadrant of Tullahoma is flush with apartments already. Secondly, Lincoln and East Middle Schools will be pressed to accommodate the students that another apartment complex would entail. Third, traffic on East Lincoln Street is very steady throughout the entire day. The increase of traffic from another complex of apartments will congest East Lincoln Street all the more. 
The pedestrian traffic is also heavy around the proposed site due to the Briarwood, Eastgate, and Ada Farrell apartment communities. And then next, the adjacent neighborhoods, Ham, Anderson, and Lynn Streets, but especially Ham Street, will more than likely see their property values decrease as they will share backyards with a noisy apartment complex. Finally, I cannot fathom how this proposal is being brought to the table and even being considered during the ongoing national pandemic since the meeting is essentially closed to the public. Only residents who are technically savvy may voice opinions. Given the two previous statements, entertaining this rezoning proposal at this particular time seems especially underhanded to me. Thank you for airing my concerns. Um, and then let's recognize Miss um, Joy Morgan. I can see you on the call, but we cannot hear you. She shows up on my screen as muted, Jennifer. Yeah, I actually see two of her on my screen, but... Let's maybe come back in a minute. I can't seem to get her audio. Um, I know Selena Trussell. And just... Press your space bar or unmute yourselves. There you go. Thank you for the opportunity to allow me to speak tonight. I really appreciate that. Uh, is the time two minutes? I heard there was a time, but I wanted to see what our time was for speaking. Yes, ma'am. Two minutes. State your name and address. And then if you want to yield, somebody wants to yield their time to you, you can have that additional two minutes. Thank you. I'll be yielding. My name is Selena Trussell. I'm at 202 Ham Street. Uh, we are a homeowner. We've been here for 19 years. 29. I'm sorry, 29 years. And we have enjoyed raising our children here. So we would like to stay here. Um, we attended the last meeting we had uh, regarding the same issue a few years ago. I cannot recall the exact year, but I think it was around 2009. Uh, it was um, reviewed and um, declined at that time. Um, I would like to uh, make a comment to the owners. Um, I really understand your situation and um, I wish there were, was a good answer to meet everyone's needs. I'm not sure how that would happen, but just want you to know that we're not against you, we choose that we are concerned about. First of all, you had mentioned that the city should be able to impact the flood zoning in Tallahoma. That is a FEMA zoning. They are the ones that, ha that do the zoning for flooding. Um, I have had to address them numerous times and I'm not sure that the city could do that for us. Um, I wish they could. Second of all, as being an eyesore, uh, I personally enjoy the wooded area behind our house. Our property is connected to your property. So what is behind us are woods. We have uh, animals, deer, red fox, squirrels, um, all of the natural animals that we get to enjoy. Uh, if this is removed, we are not gonna be having this. And uh, so it's really not an eyesore. It is a beautiful area. Second of all, I would like to address um, some safety issues that, that we are concerned about. Just at this current moment, um, uh, okay. hello? That was uh, your two minutes. Um, so did you, you said somebody's going to yield some time to you? Yes. yes. I am William Trussell, her husband. 
I yield my two Okay, is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Dalton alone had uh, approximately 250 people there. I'm not sure how many residents are at Ada Farrell East looking at a population of people in a very small condensed area. Uh, we have a lot of crime in this area. We all know that. We even had a fatal shooting at Ada Farrell this weekend. And I don't know the statistics now on what the crimes are, but another thought that concerns me, if we had some type of an emergency in this area, let's say someone, um, a hate crime decided to farm or something in apartment complexes, how are we going to evacuate all of these people safely? Okay, that is a concern for us. Also the traffic flow, I uh, agree with the lady at the corner of Stewart Street and East Lincoln Street regarding that. I also would like to ask if we have looked at the um, subdivision regulations yet because we don't want to put the cart before the horse. If we make this, we re rezone this area and then you look at the regulations and they the plans cannot meet the regulations of the subdivision, then it has been for no cause. Uh, there, I would like for everyone to please review the Tallahoma subdivision regulations. Um, I have provided Jennifer with a list of certain um, points that I would like for the public to look at, and they do address very much about the water. We have a creek, Bobo Creek, that goes through this property, and it is not just a straight creek. Your time. That's time. All right. Is there anyone else that's yielding you time? Oh. Right. It looks like they've muted themselves. Thank you all for y'all's comments. We appreciate it. Um, Jennifer, who do we have next on the list? Um, what are you? Okay. I, I yield my time to so I was going to let her speak through my microphone for two minutes. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry. Selena, did you guys hear that without the feedback? Yes. Um, Selena, she, um, she is yielding her time to you. You have an additional two minutes. They look like they have frozen. Okay. Did someone Did, yield her time? Their time to Selena. Uh, Joy Morgan yielded her two minutes to you, Selena. Looks like they've her time to me to Selena. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I will. Thank you, Gwen. I appreciate that. Uh, so this Bobo Creek comes from Wagner Field area. We're just going to use that as a starting point. It goes through the wood area. The other end of Ham Street, that is where the Grinds used to live, which is right now we have ground that will soak this this water up. If you put buildings and parking lots and houses, all of this there, we have nothing to soak the water up. I have numerous pictures that show what the water looks like now. I can't imagine what it would be if we had more property built. When the National Guard built across Highway 55, the water flow increased in our area. We have those photos of that as well. There is a big concern for flooding. The, pe the uh, people across the creek from us, it floods up to the, the 
flooring of their house. They've had to replace the flooring in their house. They have their air conditioner unit up on a big block because of the water that flows down Bobo Creek, just adjacent to our property. This is going to be a big issue for any resident on Ham Street and downstream. Uh, we're seeing increased uh, water flow on Anderson Street and Land Street as well. So not having the ground to soak up this water is an issue. Also, the water that we are getting this spring, we have just a few yards behind our house, seven trees, huge oak trees that uprooted and fell over and caused a domino effect of uprooting other trees. And that um, just happened this spring. Okay. Thank you, um, Selena. All right, Jennifer, who, and then just be available that you may have more time yielded to you. <laughs> um, Jennifer, who is next? Okay, um, and if the, <laughs> as we have speakers, if you will give your name and address before you start making your comments, that will help us. Let's go to Ronnie and Max, Gerald. Okay. Can you hear? Yes, it was difficult to hear, but it sounded and like Max also yielded his few minutes to Selena Trussell. Okay. Ms. Trussell? Thank you, Max. I appreciate that. Uh, we are also. It's two minutes to Selena. Okay. And Ronnie Gerald did as well. So you have four minutes, Selena. Okay. Thank you very much. We are very concerned about the traffic impact that there will be in the area. Um, it's increasing, trafficking is increasing. Where we live, we hear the sirens, we hear the crashes, we hear the impacts. There are accidents that occur almost on a daily basis and they are at the corner of Highway 55, Freeman Street, at the corner of Highway 55 and your short stop road, and at the corner of Highway 55 and Anderson, Highway um, East Lincoln and Ham Street. East Lincoln and Lynn Street. There's a hill there. We're going to have more traffic. There's going to be more pedestrians. Um, I'm afraid we're going to have pedestrians hit. I think we need to look at how we're going to handle this, and that is part of the subdivision regulation as well. Um, again, we are also overpopulating a school that is already in great need of helping underprivileged children and They've already had, the city was grateful to um, already build a school, replace East Lincoln with a new building, and this is going to increase their population. We don't have enough teachers. We may have a building, but we don't have enough teachers. We have most all of the uh, living area like this is in this quadrant of the town. I'm not saying that we don't need areas like this for people to live but we are overpopulating this one area of the town. Can we look at another area? If we truly need to have uh, buildings like this, apartments or multiple housing. Uh, we also are concerned. About the uh, safety issues. Living here for 29 years, we have seen and heard a lot. At one incident, we were in our yard, backyard with our children on a Saturday. And uh, as usual, they were playing um, in the yard and we were about to have ours. Man comes out of the woods, handgun, and he had a partner with him. And we called the police. The police came and it was a foot chase. They were chasing them through the area of this property that they're trying to rezone. 
one of the the one that did not have the handgun was captured uh, on foot by a police officer got him down on the ground while the other officer was chasing the one with the gun they happened to meet up close to each other the person that had the gun drew his gun on the other police officer and the other police officer had his buddy down on the ground so that is one incident the only way that that officer did not get shot is he had his partner and he didn't want his partner shot that is one incident multiple times all year the police are having to stop in front of our house we live on the loop the little circle on ham street they stop at our house to ask permission to go through our yard to get someone that is in the woods or on our property or one of our neighbor's property. We don't know what happens. We don't get reports of what is going on. But if it requires free police cars, that it must be serious. And we just don't want to add to this, this problem. Dawson Apartments, they have a police on their property all the time now because of this. And we don't we don't have enough police officers as it is Hi. and thank you for that had to be angela was that two or was that four minutes that was four minutes okay thank you You're welcome all right um thank you I believe that there's a uh, Terry Beau Beauregard that would like to speak and you're muted if you'll hold your space bar down or unmute yourself. There you go. I've, I'm unmuted, correct? We can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Just state your address and name. My name is Terry Beauregard. My address is 118 Ham Street and I agree with everybody prior. I am worried about the drainage situation. I am worried about having more public housing on this end of town. I work in healthcare. I come home late at night. There are blue lights at that section eight place already. I moved here from California two years ago and I don't wanna live in California East. I don't know what the owners think that they're gonna beautify the place by having more public housing they're costly that's that's not that's not money the city's going to gain that's those are people who bring nothing to your community for the greatest degree but crime and drugs and i understand about safety like celine was talking about but ultimately that's what you're giving us if you choose to rezone and put that in i'm gonna have to put up you know razor wire and I don't even know where the limits are, if they're gonna give us an easement of anything to give us any blockage, but I am super concerned about this. I mean, I don't understand why this, like the first person said, 40 years. Now, what, what's the difference between now and then? Is it just a hurry to get this property unlo unloaded? I mean, I'd be willing to buy an acre behind my place just so that I would have some buffer zone. I don't know what that's going to entail, but yeah, it's like just bringing criminals to my neighborhood and I'm not pleased. And I would hope that there's enough people here in this community that would agree with that. You are populating this side of town with, with the same problems. And I don't think that's fair. You know, I don't know where you all live, but I wonder if you'd want this behind your house. Um, thank you, Terry. Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer, I, I don't know, oh. did somebody take my two minutes? This is Ryan Jericho. I'm not sure if I, if Max, if I um, yes, Max and Roni's four minutes went to uh, Miss Trussell. Okay. I, okay, I thought I was going to take two, but that's fine. I had something to say. I, I'm I'm from the north, so I could do it in thirty seconds. According to the rules that we have here, I'm sorry you've already donated your time. 
I understand. I didn't realize that. I apologize. All right. Jennifer, who is our next one? I think she is trying to cue them up. Jennifer, you're currently muted. All right. Hey, to myself. Uh, Dwayne Stocky, do you have anything you would like to say during this public hearing? I think he's muted as well. I don't show muted, but. I don't either. It's not showing muted, but we're not getting any audio. We're not Dwayne, hearing. We can't hear you right now, sir. Hmm. Wayne, if, uh, let's see. If you will send me your phone number to my email address, jmoody at tn.gov, I'll give you a call. Okay. And I think there's one other I don't recognize here that says Matt and Dixie. On the Zoom, do you want to speak to this public hearing? Yeah, that's, uh, I'm Matt Crawford. I'm at 211 Ham Street. And um, I own, well, I own two other pieces of property right behind me all along Bobo Creek. And uh, I've lived here about 40 years. And that creek is about 30 feet wide and about 10 feet deep is the, the creek bed. And even this spring, when it got full, it filled all that up pretty easily. And the area between Ham Street and uh, Anderson Street to a depth of about four feet in my backyard. Now, my house at 211 is at the top of the hill, so I can look out my big back window here and watch it. But uh, that's a lot of water. You can, I started to do the calculations, but I own about 900 feet. It's 30 feet wide, 10 feet deep, and it gets about four feet above that. Do you add any more? I don't know what people are going to do. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. Thank you for your time and your comments. Let's see if Jennifer has been able to um, get Dwayne pulled up. Thank you all for bearing with us through this time. Yeah. I don't have it just yet. Um, Okay, wait, wait, just say cut it off. Um, Y'all's, um, y'all became unmuted. Mr. and Ms. Shepard, y'all might want to mute yourself. Y yes, okay. we're, we're, we're unmuted. We just want to make a quick statement is all. And uh, look, we understand all the concerns of all those property owners on that east end. Hello? And I promise you that I would be, I would have the same concerns. I have the uh, other half of the okay. party on. Is this here and what we're, what we, what we're thinking. I can hear you, but I... Let me uh, put you on speakerphone so they can hear you. Right. There you go. Okay, let's time out, everybody. All right. Shepherds were speaking. Um, um, can you give me one second, uh, Mr. Miss Shepherd? I think we have. Do we have Dwayne on the phone now? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm on feedback. Hopefully, I won't feedback then. Okay, Mr. Stocky, if you would please state okay. your name. Yeah, my name is Dwayne Stocky. I live at 210 Ham Street. Uh, on the loop there with uh, Max and Ronnie and Selena and Bill and where uh, Matt and Dixie are. We're all right there together. I just wanted to uh, say the same concerns that uh, have already been shared. Um, we're certainly worried about the property values uh, from the type of housing that may come in there. 
Um, also, we understand uh, the flooding issue there is certainly an issue. Um, we have had to deal with that over the years multiple times. Um, so that's certainly a concern when you come in and you start moving that around. I know you would think that the city would be able to come in there and fix that issue uh, with their planning and everything like that. But I just don't know that that would be truly accomplished uh, in there. I'm not an engineer. I know that would need to be studied, but that's certainly a concern based off of the history that we have with all of the uh, runoff that already comes through that area. Uh, and of course the crime is, is a big concern as well. Uh, as the owners have stated, they would have those same concerns, but that end of town there already has so many complexes that we're dealing with that um, have that type of low income housing. I understand we, we have a need for that, but I just hate the fact that um, we might be bringing more of it to that end of town, uh, considering all the crime and everything that's already comes through that neighborhood there. So those are my biggest concerns. Selena and Bill have done an excellent job mm -hmm. of, uh, of expressing um, uh, what's going on there. I just wanted to let it be known that uh, I share their opinions being a uh, homeowner right there on that same end of Ham Street there. Um, I just wanted to go on record as being supportive of those things that have been mentioned. Thank you, Dwayne. Um, I know that the Shepherds wanted to speak again, um, but being that you are... Okay, thank you, Dwayne. I'm going to hang on. Being that y'all are the ones who are requesting this, you will have a chance to field questions from the board if we have questions about that. So if you'll just give me a minute on that. Yeah. Um, I would just, uh, I'm just really just like, a, I've got a, like one statement is all I got to say. And I think we're okay. good. Uh, again, we are, we are, we, we, we hear the, we hear the, those property owners, uh, concerns loud and clear. Our, our, sell the property. So I think Ron Wheeler, our, our real estate agents on the phone here, we have stated that we want $200,000 for that property. You have 19 property owners on Ham Street. As far as I'm concerned, if most property owners want to buy that property, they can. And some of those lots on Ham Street look like they're about a half acre, and they could buy they could buy a lot of property for a very cheap. And some of those some of those property lines, I've looked at the property line and been out there and looked at it. And uh, look, I'll have a survey to see how much property line it is. But if anybody's interested in buying their property that would be a good idea we're not in the position to, to 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 create some sort of ill will with the neighbors but um uh that property is for sale for two hundred thousand dollars if, if, if eight or ten of those property owners want to buy the whole thing and do what they want to with it go for it that's all i gotta say mr chairman thank you Rick, can you go on listening um yes, all right course. If everybody would mute, uh, Jennifer, do we have any other people that would like to speak to this on the public hearing that you have listed? None, no others that I know of. Okay. All right. If that is the case, then I am going to close the public hearing and then I am opening up. Um, this will be a zoning, you know, and this is just a recommendation that we would send to the board of mayor and aldermen for this. So uh, I would entertain a motion on um, zoning map amendment 236, a request to rezone 28.4 acre, 28 acre parcel on 1800 East Lincoln Street from R2 to um, medium density to R3 high density. Mr. Chairman Ray Noas. Yes, sir. Do we have a recommendation from staff? Yes, if you will look in your packet on page. Give me a second. Um, the staff recommendation right now would be staff recommends alternative two. Um, which would say send an unfavorable recommendation to the board of mayor and aldermen. 
That is the staff's recommendation at this time. Thank you. I move to accept staff recommendation. So do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to send a unfavorable, I guess that's how it's, it's a little bit backwards this time. Our motion is to send an unfavorable motion to um, the Board of Mayor Alderman and deny uh, the zoning request from 1800 East Lincoln Street. Um, that was made by um, Mr. Dois and seconded, I think it was Ms. Blackwell, is that correct? Correct, no motion. Correct. Okay, that's what I thought, I'm sorry. All right, we have discussion. Is there any discussion between the board members at this time? Mr. Chairman, um, is it my correct understanding that at this time the Shepherds actually have no plans for any kind of a building here uh, at this point in time? We got buildings. We got buildings. That, that's that's correct at, at this time. So. So there's actually nothing that's, there's not a plan coming along to develop this, so. Um, this is strictly uh, a rezoning request from the- um, Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. And, and I just wanna review, and I think Jennifer might be able to answer this. I don't have my notebook in front of me and I looked at it earlier. Can we go through what all can go under R3? or a quick overview of everything that can go under an R3? Why? Why? If everyone please mute your computers at this time. Okay, so uh, the, I, I believe you know the R2 medium density residential that it is currently allows for single family and two family dwellings. The proposed zoning is for high density residential you can do single and two family dwellings. You can also do multifamily, townhouses, boarding houses, condominiums, congregate residences, and then same accessory and temporary buildings are allowed in both districts. Am I crazy or did we also at some point, I'm remembering a thing with R3 and microbreweries. Does anybody remember what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, we may allow microbreweries in. Okay. Yes. It, isn't there a different designation for that combination type property where you can have mixtures of housing and commercial and things like that? Is there a definite one like that? Mixed use. Mixed use, yes. Asking the question, do we have a mixed use zone? Going back to the question about microbreweries, just quickly, it looks like they are only allowed in the commercial district. One of our commercial districts is C3. So that may be what you were remembering. The C probably, probably. Is our only district that I would say is allows for a mixture of residential and commercial uses. That's the one I was thinking of. Exactly. Yeah. I just wanted to confirm before we move forward that that wasn't this area. Is there any other discussion among our board? Um, first, I just wanted to clarify and confirm that the city would not be responsible for for um, the request to change the flood map. That is a FEMA process and out of the city's hands. And um, so I just wanted to go ahead and clarify that. And then second, Jennifer, what's the sewer capacity? Do you, is that the new view? Are we talking about there? Um, let's are we close to capacity at that like, or is there lots of capacity? Just sorry, I put you on a spot. 
I know that it's available. I believe it would, their capacity would be there. Okay. You believe it. You don't know that. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Anybody else? If that's the case, I will call to question and we will vote. I will ask your name and you let me know. This is actually a little bit backwards. <laughs> so we are voting that send a unfavorable, um, an unfavorable designation on this zone change. So, um, Mr. Crabtree. Uh, aye, yes. Mr. Ellis. Aye. Mr. Comer. Aye. I'm sorry, uh, Bill, did you say aye? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Paul? Aye. Ms. Blackwell? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. And um, I will vote aye as well. So that's unfavorable to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. So I thank everybody for the time that they put in and all the comments. We appreciate your time and hopefully you felt like you were heard. And um, with that, we will go to new business. And it is a text amendment. This is also a public hearing. This is um, a proposed text amendment to the Franklin County Zoning Resolution Article 4, Section 10.1. Signs permitted in all districts to add 10.1 on the site signs not to exceed 32 square feet are allowed for all fire departments in all zone districts. So with that being said, is there anything that you'd like to add to this, Jennifer? I'll just add that you're receiving this because this is in our urban growth boundary. Okay. All right, um, with that, I will open up the public hearing. If there is anyone that would like to speak on that, um, i open it now, two minutes. Please state your name and address. So, do we have anybody that'd like to speak to that? All right, with that, I'm gonna close the public hearing. Um, I guess we can entertain a motion. Anybody? On the move, to, move to approve. Second. Okay. That was Miss Blackwell and that was, I think, Larry. Was that yeah. right, Mr. Crabtree? Okay. That's correct. Second. All right. Having to go by voice a lot of times on this. I understand. <laughs> so. All right. With that, um, we open for discussion. Is there any discussion amongst the um, commission members? All right. With that, I call a question um, for this zoning amendment, um, FCZTA6. Um, Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Mr. Nellis. Aye. Mr. Comer. Aye. Paul. Aye. Ms. Blackwell. Aye. Ms. Smith. Aye. I will vote aye as well. That passes. Um, now we're on to other new business. We have um, a bond to approve performance bond and amount on Woodland Phase 1 in the amount of $38,000 for improvements including sidewalk erosion, uh, sediment control, and construction of ingress and egress Phase 1, including four lots along Riley Creek Road. Um, all right, with that, um, Jennifer, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, yes, this is a minor subdivision that was approved by the Planning Commission uh, back in July of 2018. And you recently saw construction plans in May of this year for the entire development, phase one and phase two of the woodlands. And those were approved in May of this year, 2020. Now they are ready to proceed with construction of the public improvements sidewalks, uh, erosion and sediment controls, and an entrance, ingress, egress off of Riley Creek Road. And so um, 
in order for them to record their final plot and sell lots, they must either construct the improvements or put up a performance bond. So we are having you approve the performance bond in the amount of 38,000. That's recommended by our public works department. All right. With that, um, we would entertain a motion. Move to approve. All right, thank you. That's Larry with the motion. Do I have a second? Second. That's Mr. Comer with the second. All right, with that, now we will open up for discussion for the approval of the um, bond. Any One English? question. Yes, sir. One question, Mr. Gray. Is this only for the four lots there on Riley Creek Road? Does it relate to only those four lots? Yes, that's correct. All right. Any other questions or comments? If that is the case, then I will call to the question. We have on there, we had to, to approve a performance bond in the amount of $38,000 for the Woodlands phase one. Um, I'll ask y'all, uh, Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Mr. Nois. Aye. Mr. Comer. Aye. Paul. Aye. Ms. Blackwell. Aye. Ms. Smith. Aye. And I will say I as well. That passes unanimously. With that, I do not see any other business on our agenda. Our next meeting will be Monday, August 17th, 2020. And with that, we will be adjourning the Planning Commission and going into, all right, so that's will that, will that also be an electronic meeting? Yes. Uh, Yes, sir. It is according to the ordinance. We still have through August 29th with that. Okay. All right. Um, with that, meeting's closed. All right. Now we're going to call to order the City of Tallahoma Board of Zoning Appeals meeting agenda. Uh, we have, I'm sorry, the meeting, and I have the agenda. That's what I get for reading. Um, so uh, I'll call it to order. Um, looks like. Um, we have one item on the agenda that is a variance case 210. I'll just read it. It says a request for a variance from the setback requirements of the zoning ordinance table TZ1, which requires all buildings in the C2 zoning district to have a minimum of 35 foot setback from all streets right of ways. The request is to reduce the required setback on North Jackson Street to 15 feet to allow for enclosed structure and a loading dock. Uh, this is going, this is Miss Lynn Davies was the, was representing bid lot, big lots on that. So that's what we're doing today. So I'm going to, can um, I entertain a motion? We have some minutes available. Can once we look at those minutes and once we have that, I'll entertain a motion. Are you entertaining a motion to approve the minutes of our previous meeting or to yes. vote on the bill? No, no, that's no previous meeting. I move we approve. Second. Right. Mr. Comer and then Ms. Blackwell seconded. All those in favor of approving the previous minutes say aye. Right, now I got to do it again. Sorry. I got in the motion. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Mr. Nois. Aye. Mr. Comer. Aye. Paul? Aye. All right. Um, Ms. Blackwell? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. And I will say aye as well. All right. So we have no, that moves unanimously. We have no unfinished business. We have the variance case, which is in front of us right now. So Jennifer, is there anything you'd like to speak to on this? Yes, I'll, I would like to say the applicant was Lynn Davies with Precision Permits, but with us today we have uh, Mike New representing Big Lots and also Keith Fagan 
um, that I maybe would like to let them introduce the project. Um, Mr. New, would you like to go first? Yes, hello. My name is Michael New. I'm at 628 Borer Road, Grove City, Ohio. And we are proposing to build a covered enclosure to um, facilitate receiving and keep the public, which also includes um, proposed landscaping um, to further uh, disguise that uh, side of the building. Um, that is really all that this is. Okay. All right, um, Mr. Fagan, would you like to add any comments to that as well? Um, no, Mike pretty much uh, made it straightforward there. Um, we worked locally with uh, Ralph Graham uh, to do the landscaping. He's familiar with your city ordinances with that. So just to try to make it right, that's what we, that's who we organize with. So, and I think Ralph's actually on the call as well. Okay, all right. With that, thank you, Mr. Fagan, Mr. New, mm -hmm. Jennifer, anything else that we need to do before I entertain a motion? Um, I would just, if you would like, I may be able to share my screen and go through um, some of the plans, but they were provided in your packet. I just wanna share with you that if you look closely at the plans, you can see where the setback line lies and the proposed structure crosses that setback line. Um, but I do feel like there's a little bit of a precedent set in this area. The area they're requesting to use is currently enclosed with a chain link fence. And when the property was occupied by Kmart, that was used as an outdoor garden center space. And so I do feel like we've allowed commercial activity in that area uh, in the past. And so I felt like we could support this, this request uh, for what would be an enclosed structure and would limit the public's view of the activities going on there. In addition, I provided a copy of the North Jackson Streetscape Plan, which you know has a, a kind of fulfills our desire to see more attractive landscaping in the green spaces between uh, parking lots and buildings and the, and the highway of North Jackson Street. And I feel like Ralph Graham and his work, they've helped show how that area could be addressed to meet the vision of our streetscape plan and also serve as screening to the commercial activities going on there. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. With that, um, I'd like to entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. All right, we had that was Miss Blackwell with the motion and um, Mr. Crabtree with the second. We have um, now any discussion amongst our board. So like we're oh. go ahead. No, go ahead, Ray. Uh, I'd like to. <clears throat> I'm familiar with the property very much, but the old uh, Kmart Garden area there. Does the proposed area extend closer to Jackson Street than the current garden section on the old Kmart building? No, we're not extending past the current pavement. We're staying inside the pavement line that was there before. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Larry, did you have a question? Uh, part of Ray's answered mine they, that they're going to be offloading on the what would be the west side of the building and not in the rear. If it was in the rear, I would be worried about truck entrance and egress because that would be pretty tight in there. But where they're putting it, it's fine. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any other questions or comments? All right, with that, we will call the question um, for the move for the approval of variance case 210 for the offset uh, for big lots. 
Uh, Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Mr. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Comer. Aye. Paul. Aye. Ms. Blackwell. Aye. All right. And Ms. Smith. Aye. And I will vote aye as well. That is unanimous. And with that, um, we are adjourned. There is not another posted time till we have another meeting of our Board of Zoning and Appeals. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Appreciate all that you do. Anything that you'd like to end with, Jennifer? No, thank you. All right. Everybody have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Thanks. everyone. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. It was a long meeting. Oh.